first essential skill you need to know is how to find the darn things. Let's find them. And I told you the answer. You got to have magnification and illumination simultaneously. You'll find some, but you aren't going to find things, John. You're not going to find them all. I'm sorry. It's a tool we got to have. And so just planning out there, yes, I'm going to do that. Now you got a plan. I don't care when, just so you got a plan. And notice the assistant is, this is my son, Jason, the assistant's there too. So Desiree, when she's with me, we're in the game together. And Desiree knows what's next because she can see it. She's giving me energy. It's lonely being doing a root canal, isn't it? It's lonely. You're in that hole by yourself. Nobody gives a rip. You're all by yourself. You have no help, support. Emotionally, you're used up because you can't get down the canal. You can't find that MB2. So this is a, another aspect of being able to see is have the, the nurse. You have, it's two people against one instead of one. And then you say, well, I don't really need a microscope, John. This is from many years ago, but look, it's kind of a bad overfill there. But it's even worse than that. And you say to yourself, how could they possibly miss that bad? Well, on a maxillary front tooth, are you going to perforate on the lingual or the facial if you're going to perforate? I'll always give you the answer a second. How's that? Okay, so the lingual or the facial? Facial. facial. So I knew that. And as a one-year-old endodontist, one time I, I perforated on the lingual just to show it could be done, I guess. Now, I always thought it'd be kind of neat if we had a seminar and we shared the one thing that you did in dentistry and you haven't told anyone else about it. <laughs> I'll tell you one of mine. I made an access in a ponic one time. Stupid assistant. You know what? I learned. You, we learn not from our successes, right? We learn when we fall down and we learn how to get back up. So you know what I do now? I actually check to make sure the rubber dam's on the right tooth. And it was about a month ago I started making access and knew something was wrong because there shouldn't be a tooth behind the one I was making the access. Sure enough, it was on the first molar and not the second molar. So I, I learned a lifetime lesson. And that's the value of these things is not to beat yourself up but learn the lesson. So I told you about the X gates and it's four gates glidens, which is useful, you know, less is more. And I told you about the axis, as I'm just reviewing here, just to remind you, okay? What percent of the lower anteriors have two canals? 40%. So what I'm handing out to you is a sheet that tells how many canals are in each tooth. So you, I, have, I actually have these at chair side because I can't remember. So, okay, front teeth, cuspid to cuspid. You've got triangle one and two, okay? Now most of you, just watch me now, most of you on a front tooth make your accesses too wide. When I'm looking at accesses, you chopped off too much mesial and distal and not enough incisal, incisal apical. Turn it. So now, this is the triangle two, this is the upper tooth. You're removing triangle two, you have to come up a little more and triangle one. Even endodontists, I see patients that they've treated, they've gone around either triangle one and two or both. Okay, so make sure you've got in the front teeth, the triangles are gone. Which canal on the top teeth has the hook on it? You treat it, you screw it up, you refer it to the endodontist. You're always gonna treat it, so you better remember which one it is. Which one has the hook? It is the, what, which tooth? Lateral, exactly. And if you know that, then you gotta preserve that turn. Otherwise you're gonna be straight and the hook will still be there and cause an endo lesion perhaps. Posterior teeth also have triangles. So this is a molar, but it could be any tooth. Now, if you look here, anybody could see that, because I'm up here, I can look straight down, but I can't look in here unless I'm laying on the chamber floor, because there's a triangle here. How do you remove those to find the canal? Remember, we're finding the canal. So let's take an example of maxillary molar, and here's that little peep hole. I can't see down it unless I were laying on the chamber floor. And if we look closer, you can see it better. So we could use an X gates or just an e a gates glidden, just bzz, up forward. Now I'm looking straight down it. Now I own it. And then I have a chance to shape it and pack it in 
a, a com controlled way. Another Max Lorry molar, finding the canal. So with the microscope, you're going to be able to see these color changes. When you're looking for a canal and in the tissue is white, go away from that. That's not the right spot. It will look like this. You'll be able to see. There's no hole there yet. Pulps die coronal apically and they calcify coronal apically. Right? They calcify. So sometimes you can't find the canal. Where is it? It's another half a millimeter. So you just got to go another half a millimeter, but you have to go in the right spot. Because if you go over there, that's the wrong spot. Weaken the tooth, make a hole. So one thing you do, you get all ready, you put your long shank, number one round burr in your high speed, and you say, okay, let's go, and you can't see anything because the head of the handpiece is in the way. So what do you do? Fire it up, and then look. Oh, my God. I have to go the other way. Angle that, fire it up. Oh, all the wrong way again. Uh, oh, now I'm good. P pretty soon you got all these burr holes. In dentistry, we don't, we are self-selected. We are here because we want to do the best thing for the patient. You can't get away from it. I can show you a new tool, and in the final analysis, if it doesn't do a better job, you will discard it. It might be faster, you might make more money, but in the heart of hearts, eventually you're going to say, I can't do it. Some people who use hand instrumentation still is because they've heard about breaking something and the fear is just too great. I cannot possibly take that risk. And I, I, you know, I, I applaud you for that. So we have to see and do simultaneously. Then we feel safe.